February might be a short month, but it's still jam-packed with all sorts of cool streaming movies and shows on your favorite streaming services. Here is a list of some of our recommendations. As much as we try to highlight brand new stuff, there's nothing wrong with re-watching a classic, or rather, binge-watching three very long classics, which you can do when the Lord of the Rings trilogy hits Netflix on the first. And you know what? It's it, You might have it on, on Blu-ray or DVD or whatever, but it's, it's easier to just put it on Netflix than digging out your box set. And look, I usually watch these movies over the holidays, and I didn't this year, and my 2023 is a wreck so far. Anyway, as for actually new stuff, on February 9th, you can catch part one of the fourth season of the Netflix original series, You. Not to be confused with such hit films as Us, It, Her, Them, They, Them, or Me, Myself, and Irene. On February 16th, vent some frustrations vicariously when everyone's favorite death metal red panda, Agretzko, returns for more animated antics. And on the 23rd, there's more drama for those teen treasure hunters when Outer Banks returns for season three. Keep your shirts on, you rascals. Finally, on the 24th, there's We Have a Ghost, the horror comedy with a fairly self-explanatory title, which stars David Harbour, Anthony Mackie, and Jennifer Coolidge. And honestly, after White Lotus, I would watch anything that she's in, especially if it involves phantasms. The second season of Carnival Row was filmed way back in 2019, and fans will be happy to hear that it's finally hitting Prime Video on the 17th. But it's going to be a bittersweet return because it was announced back in November that the second season will also be its last. If you enjoy Christoph Waltz being Christoph Waltz, you might enjoy The Consultant, wherein he seemingly brings his trademark Hans Landa shtick to corporate workplace in efforts to maximize efficiency, which sounds equal parts hilarious and also terrifying. That is on the 24th. And of course, The Legend of Vox Machina Season 2 continues with new episodes each week, which is probably more frequent and consistent than most people's ongoing D&D games. On February 1st, the Proud Family Louder and Prouder returns for Season 2, and that same day, Black Panther Wakanda Forever hits Disney Plus as well, so you can cry your eyes out all over again, and shortly thereafter, have a good laugh at the expense of Namor's little flying fish feet. And look, I'm all for faithful adaptations of comic book source material, and I'm really glad they gave Namor the wings. I'd probably be pretty cross if they didn't, but look, there's no way that it wasn't going to look silly, so I think we all just need to accept that and look forward to him hitting on Sue Storm right in front of Reed Richards while flapping his little feet wings around. Anyway, if you want to learn about the movie magic involved with bringing those little flying fish feet to the big screen, the behind-the-scenes series Marvel Studios Assembled gives an inside look at Wakanda Forever on the 8th. Also on the 8th is the series finale of National Treasure, Edge of History. And then two days later on the 10th, Pixar's Doug Days gets a new episode entitled Carl's Date, which should be some long overdue closure for everybody who's still wrecked by the first 10 minutes of Up. Get out there, Carl. You deserve that. Oh, also, if you've been enjoying new episodes of Star Wars The Bad Batch every Wednesday, well, great news. You can continue to do that this month as well, unless you're busy with other stuff. I don't, I don't know your business. On the second, you can catch the indie dark comedy I'm Totally Fine, which stars Jillian Bell and Natalie Morales. It's usually not normal if a dead friend shows up in the land of the living again, and it's even less normal if they're acting weird. I, I don't know, I, I, that's a pretty vague description, but you know, I watched half the trailer, and it looks pretty funny, and I think it's good to go in with like less of an idea of what's going on. I think comedy is good when it's got some surprises to it. Anyway, that's from the folks behind Workaholics and what we do in the shadows, so it seems promising. On the third, the three-part docuseries Killing County drops, which is a look at a corruption in the Bakersfield Police Department, which is produced by Colin Kaepernick, and I have a sneaking suspicion this won't exactly be a heartwarming story. Then on the 15th, season three of Wu-Tang and American Saga premieres, and sadly, this will also be its last season. Hopefully, we get a spin-off series that chronicles the later adventures of Old Dirty Bastard, like the time he took a limousine to the welfare office to pick up food stamps, or how he got featured on the hit song Ghetto Superstar because he accidentally showed up to the wrong recording studio but decided to just kind of go with it, and the rest was history. Anyway, speaking of beloved 90s cartoon characters, Yakko, Wacko, and Dot are back for more rebooted antics in Animaniacs Season 3 on the 17th. Over on HBO Max, still more antics from beloved Agents of Chaos who debuted on Fox Kids way back in the early 90s when Harley Quinn gets a very problematic Valentine's Day special on the 9th. If you'd prefer something a little more somber that still involves whacking people upside the head with blunt objects, The Last of Us continues dropping new episodes every Sunday. On the third, Dear Edward premieres, the 10-episode adaptation of the best-selling novel about a 12-year-old who's the sole survivor of a plane crash who then wonders if maybe he's got superpowers. 
Actually, I just added that second part. That's just the plot of Unbreakable, except it's a train crash, not a plane crash. On the 17th, the Apple original film Sharper premieres. This stars Julianne Moore, John Lithgow, Sebastian Stan, Justice Smith, and it seems to be a thriller about rich people doing bad things. And honestly, the trailer makes it look a little bit generic, but I'll give it the benefit of the doubt because Apple TV Plus has had some great originals and it's from A24, a studio with a pretty solid track record for making good movies, or at the very least, interesting movies. Also on the 17th is the premiere of Hello Tomorrow, a sci-fi dramedy series about traveling salesmen peddling timeshares on the moon, and it's set in a neat retro-futuristic 1950s America with some major Fallout vibes. You know, before the nuclear war. On the 24th, there's The Reluctant Traveler, which has Eugene Levy traveling to exotic corners of the world, which is the sort of thing I imagine most people, including himself, don't really picture him doing. So that could be fun. The third and final season of Star Trek Picard kicks off on the 16th, and it's always sad to see things come to an end, but better they end than drag out until they completely fall apart. And hey, this means that Sir Patrick Stewart can go home and spend more time fostering pit bulls. If you're gearing up for John Wick Chapter 4 by rewatching the first three movies, Peacock has you covered. John Wick, John Wick Chapter 2, and John Wick Chapter 3 Parabellum all hit the streamer on the first. Why is Chapter 3 the only one with a cool sounding one word subtitle? Why didn't they have a cool subtitle for Chapter 4 like Interference or Resurgence or something like that? I don't know. One thing I do know though is that if anyone did anything to him, I'd be so upset. I love this little guy. That's a dog if you're curious. I know it looks like a bear or a cat or something. It's a dog. I'm still coping with the fact that a serious dramatic reimagining of The Fresh Prince of Bel-Air is a real thing and not a college humor sketch circa 2011, but while I've been working through those feelings, they've been busy making season two of this real show, which actually exists and which is premiering February 23rd. Oh, and of course, the new episodes of the Ryan Johnson, Natasha Leone series Poker Face will continue dropping every Thursday. If you don't have a Netflix subscription or any friends or family who break the rules and share passwords, Agretzko's new season hits Crunchyroll on the 16th. Meanwhile, if you need some Saturday morning cartoons in your life to cheer you up and get you through these bleak doldrum months at the beginning of the year, new episodes of Trigun Stampede and My Hero Academia are premiering every weekend, and if that's not hard-hitting enough, might I recommend pouring cold brew into your sugary marshmallow breakfast cereal instead of milk. Give that a shot, you're having a good morning. So there you have it, a real Valentine's Day box of chocolates of the sweetest movies and shows that are streaming this month. Which of these is a Godiva truffle and which of these is a melted cherry cordial with cat hair in it? Let us know in the comments and by all means, please share some recommendations of your own. If you like this video but wish it was about video games, well, I make a video just like that as well. So go check that one out. And with that, I will see you in March. Say goodbye, Peppers. Are you snoring? Wake up. You, you okay? He's so sick of my shit.